The following podcast episode might contain coarse language and sub subjects not suitable for younger audiences. Your discretion is advised. Live from a not so sleepy little town comes a podcast for a mobile game. Really? Anyhow, your hosts, a content creator and an artist, trying to come up with wild ideas while also talking about whatever. It's the Goosebumps Horror Town Terrorism Podcast! <laughs> three hours. The last episode took us three hours to get our points across. I am sorry. I thought we would do better, but we failed. <laughs> well, I enjoyed it. Uh Anyways, hi folks. Uh, Grim here, as well as my co-host, and this is the Hello, boys and girls. Yes, it's the Crypt Keeper. But um, the this is the horror te- the, t- Goosebumps Horror Town Terrorism Podcast. See, I know how to say my the, the podcast is too long. It's the HTTV. Okay. <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> yeah, there is. We're not going to be too hopefully not too long on this one because you know it's a it's hot it's what well, recording this is uh august 24th and by the time you see this i'm trying to see from my calendar here what i got going on here but uh let's see it would be i think the 13th oh friday the 13th Ooh, spooky you know so Got that. You should have like a little dancing thing to celebrate. <laughs> yeah, you'd think, right? Or, hmm. Yeah, I guess 13th would be the run, the one, right? And then I guess we'd be recording our next episode on the 21st. But I might, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what ends up happening if, if my thing stays true. It's how, whatever we feel like. <laughs> Yeah, very energetic. I do apologize over here anyways. Uh it is hot. It is stupid up here because it went from being fall weather to being summer weather to going back to fall weather. So it's like up and down season. It's not like consistent with one weather. It's like no, one day it's winter and the next day it's summer. Sorry. That's just the what we're living in in this graveyard of mine. The other thing I mean, well, over here it's just pretty meh. Yeah. The other thing, too, is that there might be, uh, apparently I ended up discovering something uh, within the graveyard, but uh, I have to see what ends up coming across. You might have already seen the announcement to that, but uh, we'll get across when we get there. Uh, I might need your assistance on that, but uh, we'll see how it goes. So let's do a bit of news before we get to our main discussions here, but uh, it's going to be brief, not a whole lot. First things first, uh, no updates still, unfortunately, as you can probably tell. Um, as far as why, no idea. They didn't say anything. They kind of the last we, we heard from them was back in July, and they have yet to say anything. So it could be many things. It could be that they having trouble with one particular code. It could be the version. It could be the new thing they're adding to it. It could be the fact that a developer ended up leaving headway through, so now they have to find some other new guy to take over, and it's just... Or maybe they're just waiting until Halloween because they think it's profitable. I don't know. There's thousands of reasons why, but the thing that I know for sure is I don't know fuck all, and neither does my co-host. So, as far as we're Uh concerned, we're in the dark. All we know is that apparently what they want to do is two updates, that's one big update, and then a side project thing for Halloween. But I don't know if that's going to end up changing now. It's going to be like, oh, the, the Halloween update is going to be like, you know, kind of like what, what happened with um, uh, with with uh, the update we had last Halloween, because that was introduced back in April, and they just hold it off until Halloween. So, I, I don't know. I don't know anymore. I'm hoping we get some information, but uh, maybe by the time this podcast comes out, we finally have the update, but a doubtful, I don't know. I don't know if they're going to be doing it like for part one, Halloween, part two, then a Christmas update. Maybe that'd be the best of both worlds, but who knows at this point. But um, 
Speaking of, with the second update, something interesting with those two-parters is that I ended up watching um, one of their other games, which is the Snoopy's Town Tales, their breadwinner. And uh, I saw a ver person talking about this. But um, I looked in the past. I think this took place, I want to say, 2022, I think, where... They decided to have an update, a summer update, where it was a two-parter of sorts. So it was a continuation, but the theme is different, but it's summary themed. So the first up part of this update was more of a undersea, going to an aquarium type base, so the items kind of fit in that direction. And then the second part to that, and the, the one that comes after it, was more of a beach going to the, you know, like sand castle type water park type of thing. So it's related, but different. And I'm wondering if that might be what he means by two parters, but I'm not sure. It sounds like it's going to be related to like just like one part and then it continues to a negative part. So it's, it almost feels like the old updates we had back in 2020, but they split it into like two parts, if that makes sense. Wait, was that was the theme that they were going for for those, or? No, I'm just thinking out loud because they've done something like that in the past. I'm just wondering if it's going to be something a vein of, it's going to have a similar theme, but there's two different styles to it. If that if that makes sense, so like maybe one part of it could be like, oh, this is uh, like that. Like there's a general theme, like say aliens, but they might be one type of alien and then another type of alien. You. you I'm trying to trying to think of a theme that would make sense to that, right? Like, or maybe it's like it's I don't know. It, it could be many things. We're just rambling on at this point. Or I'm sorry, I should be saying I rambling on, but oh boy, I feel like I'm. I think I'm feeling like one of the characters in this discussion for this video, maybe because uh, dealing with memes, but. Either that or, or uh, what else? All oh, right, there is something else, briefly. So you and I had some connections to Five Nights at Freddy's in some case, right? Yeah. Well, this month celebrates their 10th anniversary on August 8th. So because of that, throughout the 1st to the 8th, they've been having these specials. Oh, here are some interesting things popping in, right? Like there's a, there was an interview with Scott Cofton, an update one. There was some games that got released, some demos, uh, one that was really bad that forced the other game that was supposed to be released on the 8th to be released early as an apology. It just, it was a mess. And then there's a special, like, reveal, like, um, they had a, they had like, ooh, a secret collaboration coming. And uh, it was funny the whole day, like Scott posted, it's like, oh, watch, watch on Twitter. Someone's going to make an uh, update. And I wonder who, right? And it's just like everyone's just wondering with their heads, like almost like a chicken running without its head, finding information like, who, who could it be? Who could it be? Right. And the, there's two candidates that were front runners that might have been it one of them being Fortnite, and the other one being dead by daylight right those are like the two big ones that they were kind of looking at right and eventually sometime later on that night dead by daylight officially announced that yes they're the ones doing the collab that there is going to be a five nights at freddy's update most likely taking place during their ninth annual um anniversary update it's for June. Because Fortnite is cringe. Well, that, and what kind of killed that idea too was when Scott was talking about the collaboration thing and he said, I want, when I, like, I'm kind of strict with my ideas, like my property. I want to make sure that it fits with the role, right? Like, so if, you know, you got killer animatronics, you want to make sure they're still killer animatronics, right? It makes no sense if, Freddy had a gun or something like that. So he's like kind of saying, like, even if I like the game itself, if I feel like it doesn't fit the brand, I won't do it, right? So it's like, that kind of killed the idea anyways. But Dead by Daylight was heavily requested, and it makes total sense for it. The question is, oh, I'm yeah, who exactly they're going to be adding. 
There is some debate of who it could be. There could be many of them. A lot of them say Springtrap is probably the front runner, obviously, because he is the one who caused everything, right? He always comes yeah. back, apparently. But um, the other thing I kind of threw out there, which is kind of weird, is that Steel will officially announce their next game project, which is going to be The Secret of the Mimic, which we did meme on last update, last episode. And something oh, about it. Yeah, 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 we all know. What's funny about that, though, is that it is taking place 1979, so this is way early before the whole Fazbear Fright stuff, so it's like, this could be the origin point, so it's going to be interesting to see how exactly it is, and the whole idea of the mimic is that they're mimicking what they see, right? So, with the whole, well, what if we want Freddy to be the killer, or, you know, like, insert animatronic here if you had the mimic be the main bad guy it's like yeah that sucks but you can dress the mimic as spring trap it's like oh look there's spring trap and it makes perfect sense to the lore right because it's a killer animatronic but i don't know like it could be many different things i guess we'll have to wait and see what ends up happening i know there was like this worry that people were like Oh, this is just going to be a collaborate. This is going to be like costumes only because it has the X there, right? But then people pointed out, it's like, well, they did the same thing for Resident Evil and also the Ringu chapter, but those were full blown ch chapter stuff. But, you know. And uh, I've been. It's, it's going to be interesting to see how that turns out, especially since I've been watching. Like, I've been not been playing Dead by Daylight myself, but I've been watching and staying within the community since I would say the Chain of Hate update. At least that's for sure. I know I've been kind of when I was paying attention to it, but I was been aware. So somewhere around the third year. So I've been I've been in the boat for a long time. So I've seen the horrible updates that have happened. I've seen the the memes and also the 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 whole community things, but. It's near to here or there. So it'll be interesting to see how that turns out, but it won't be until another year. <laughs> maybe we'll be maybe this will go beyond that by that point, but who knows. Apparently we're still waiting on the other game coming out, which is the um the Goosebumps one, the the Tower of Terror, I think is what they're calling it, but still nothing. It says it's supposed to be released this year, but no trailers, nothing. So it's like it, I don't know if it's even being made. <laughs> but sorry, I guess I'm talking on long enough. Uh, do you want to say anything? Uh, I got nothing, honestly. Okay, well, this is going to be very interesting. What a, what a thrilling episode, folks. We're both just dead inside. <laughs> oh, great well, I've been dead for a long time. Huh? I've been dead inside for a long time, and as a and as a millennial, people go, "Oh, I love the worst." <laughs> you're, you're, you're seeing where we're going with this. All right, so let's talk about our first. I I don't think there's anything else we need to talk about, so let's go ahead and talk about our main side. Let's let's look at the past, and let's talk about what is what I dubbed to be second, third worst update that was ever released, and that would be. Rambo's gonna like Take you back to the past <laughs> to show an awful game that's like us. <laughs> He's the angriest gamer you ever heard. He's I... the angry Goosebumps Town nerd. <laughs> He's the angry Ho Adam's family nerd. <laughs> I I angry. love I like I, I'll say this. Uh I have not been keeping up with the Angry Video Game Nerd. He's kind of, I'll be honest, like, ever since he f he's fired the slobs, he, it was kind of like, it's nice the slobs are gone, but the whole fun memes came out of it. Just It's now dead, so now it's just like nothing. But I remember when the whole screen wave thing happened, a lot of people were just memeing on him. The whole, oh, it's five, oh, it's like five, uh, 540, I gotta go. <laughs> And all the other stupid memes that came out of it. From I think it was the Cinematicers, a uh, Cine, Cinemassacre Truth forum, and right, that whole thing is just a whole bunch of mess. Especially since 
what they've done is that you know Bimmy like that's that that's a joke they call him is that his name is Bimmy because it's one of the jokes from his past up like videos that he mentions from one of the characters. But anyways, they took Bimmy, they AI voiced him, and they the the people in the community decided to for two years now, and they probably do a third one this year, um, do the monster madness. So from the October 1st to the 31st, each person would do their own version of Monster Madness. Some of it would be legit, others would be memes, but it's funny to see them actually going ahead and putting a lot more effort than he does. But to be fair to him, he's like an old man now. He has like, I think, two two daughters, I think, and, you know, a wife and, you know, family. So, and it feels like, you know, the joke kind of died, but, you know, he hasn't improved. I don't know. That whole thing is just a mess. <laughs> Another person I don't watch is uh, the Nostalgia Critic. I know those used to be the way heydays of, like, internet m- being mad reviewer type shtick. You want to know something funny about well, that? Yeah. Hmm? What? I was, well, I don't know if you were going to allude to it, but. I remember that there was like a recent, uh, I think it was like the Patrick Show episode where like, yeah, uh, yeah Bubble yeah. Bass was Bubble playing Bass. as the fucking uh, <laughs> the sound critic. I love, I'll say this, I love Doug for him embracing the meme of him, and he he t- can take a oh, joke. Yeah. Like when it came to the episode, him when he appeared in the um, the Smiling Friends episode, the Halloween special. Hello, I'm the demon hunter. I kill demons, so you don't have to. <laughs> oh yeah, I remember that. <laughs> and what's funny is that he made us he made a short about it where he's just kind of like, you know, he's waking up, he's like, oh my head, and he looks at the camera and he has another one of the beers like, oh, did I drunk um cameo again? Well, hopefully it's nothing too <laughs> stupid. And he drives and it's it's the clip from the show, and he's like, <laughs> and it just cuts. <laughs> But no, the bubble bath <laughs> one was funny because everyone was pointing out, it's like, hey, hey, they reference you, they reference you, right? And he's just like, you know, I oh, watched this new SpongeBob episode. I don't know what's the whole internet about. And he's watching it, right? And he's just like clips and he's just so sad. And he's just like, this, this is not right. I have to, I have to do something. He calls the nerd, right? And he's just like, yup. Like, you know, the nerd comes and he's like, yup. And he's like, SpongeBob hates you. <laughs> <laughs> like he obviously knew he was like the, the the dress of him is totally referencing him but the fact that he went in it's just like oh spongebob hates you nerd <laughs> and speaking of, it's not even spongebob it's a spin-off it was the patrick star show which is in its own hell you know oh yeah i'm sure halvenberg is just rolling in his grave because of how nickelodeon is treating his property now but Whatever, oh, yeah. people, you know, people are buying into it, like you know how we kind of buy into our stuff. So it's nothing here or there, but no, it will. Well, I I certainly like the nostalgia critic. I haven't watched any of his new stuff, but I do appreciate the Doug for his whole thing, minus the controversy years ago with the whole change of channel stuff. But yeah, that's another can of worms we're not talking about. We're getting off topic again. So let's 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 roll back the clock. <laughs> <laughs> a bit and we mentioned uh, or i mentioned being dead inside and we're talking about like leading on to the book we were wanting to discuss the past update which is in case welcome to dead house which is the first ever book that was released for the series so it has some sort of significance right and the thing is there's stuff in this update i like but as an update as a whole, I'm not a fan of. But I'm curious of what you have to say about this as well. I mean, normally I pretty much, like, overall, I, I don't want to sound like I'm an ass kisser or anything, but overall, I pretty much just enjoy playing whatever the, the Pixel throws in the uh, horror town, you know? Because, you know. You just love that. Oh, it, it could be slop and you'd be like, mmm, good. Uh, was, <laughs> please don't the vampires. Like, mm, good. Mm, give me more. I'm like Chester McBadbat when it with Grohl. Yeah. 
So yeah, like you, you show me like the worst fucking update for like um, Goosebumps Horror Town. I'm like, oh boy, gruel, and I start chowing down on that shit. <laughs> but the thing is, with me being an entertainer, I look at bad updates and I'm like, I'm eating good tonight <laughs> because it gives me good content <laughs> to work with, right? Which when right. we get to the Valentine's Day update, I can't wait to talk about that one. We all know what it is, but you know, we'll hold our tongues for now. This time, it's going to be talking about this. The one thing I will give this update credit for, which I do love, is the character that they decide to introduce with this update, which is Compton Dawes. I love I, this. I man. really like Dawes. <laughs> I love the stupid building he comes with. It is a reference to Better Call Saul, despite it like being him as a realtor. And he's so shady. I just love it. And what's weird about the storyline with this, the original storyline anyways, with the when the, when this update came up as an event, was that there was this weird plot when it came to the last update, which was Vampire. So it's like Mr. Wood is kind of convincing um, Yvonne to possess him to be able to find her beloved. But then that plot line dropped once the book came out officially. Like, they're like, oh, that whole thing? Duh, don't forget about it. It doesn't exist. Oh, well. Yeah. If you if you do remember that. Like, you, you played the update back in 2019, right? Yeah. Okay. So, the one thing I did not like about it, though, was that how short it was. And, again... They failed like the last time, where there was a item. Like, all the uh, like all the events stop easy, 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 and then you get to the last part, and it's like, oh, you need eight thousand points to get this one item, <laughs> and you can't get it. Too bad, can't continue. So they had to near the end have like a special request where you can actually get this set item. So uh, I remember that and. The one thing I will say about my playthrough of that update was when I got the grand prize, which was like this weird chemistry set. Like, it looked cool. Don't get me wrong. It's like this weird chemistry set that's kind of like coming out of ground. You know what I mean? Like, it's like molten lava. Yeah. and it's, it's a cool looking science-y kind of back to school event type of thing, right? But when I got it, I was so like not thrilled about it i was like wow look at the eye of my god like i feel so accomplished <laughs> like i was just i was so unimpressed by it and then yeah, i was... it wasn't until later it, yeah it wasn't until like many years later when it decided to become like a supplier for monster blood that was the thing i was gonna get at i was so pissed off when the game came back with the update and i was like where's this stupid thing huh where's this prize stupid can't get it no screw me i guess and then later on they're like oh no it came back as the grand prize for monster blood and then it drops monster blood scene so that made the monster blood junk yard completely worthless because if you want to get monster blood you can just get this item and have it produce monster blood for you <laughs> well it's but, not entirely useless i mean you could still use the scene to gather scares and you yeah know, you, can get have them, like, you can see you can. you can you can have cuddles do stuff and you know trigger do stuff right i mean the scene itself is fun like it does produce it, i'm not saying it's not entirely useless i just meant in the sense of getting the item from it is entirely useless kind of like how updates have been as of late where it's like oh you can get the you got this item randomly from the scene or you can just craft it it's just like why bother doing that if i can just you know it's just i like my way of doing events better i'm just saying that i'm biased <laughs> but anyways i do like dawes as a well, character but um well I, well I was also gonna say that you know there are those uh <clears throat> pieces of land that do require you to unlock certain things so unless you ended up like having to wait multiple times for the cooldown for the supplier to drop. Uh, what you could do instead is just like, you know, uh, wait, uh, have, grab one bit, bit of monster blood from the supplier and then grab another monster blood, if you can, through the scene. And that can just like, you know, double your uh, collection to basically get closer to unlocking that piece of land, right? Because Which I don't. What, as what, you... Yeah, sorry. 
because as you continue to level up, you you realize that you have to unlock land that requires these specific scene items like vampire breath or monster blood or uh, something from the haunted Halloween or this and that and all that shit. And as well as like many of the different rings and pendants and all that pizzazz. So, um, yeah, it's just basically, I feel like the scene itself is now just become like easy farming for that sort of thing it's interesting how monster blood became part of the like main quest line that sticked around the other thing too like i will say this although the person who did the events for vampire as well as not you know please don't feed a vampire to not get anyone confused and dead house is the profile pictures for both Yvonne and Dawes, as far as when you get them, is that they have their main human character, and then their monster character is behind them in a shadowy figure. And I thought that was cool. That I'm I'm surprised they didn't include for the other characters, right? Like that was one of the designs that I actually did dig. But it just sucks that that person in particular just did not know how to make an update proper as far as like functionality is concerned like pricing was awful all that stuff and more but it can get get into that rant more when we get to do whenever we do talk about please don't feed the vampires but i drop it from here the story itself was pretty faithful to the book i would say from the source material i will say this though I do, because we did talk about Monster Blood, and there is a connection with that with Dawes as his involvement, which I think we did talk about briefly, but I'm I'm not 100% sure because this was way back in our second episode, which was back in, I, I want to say March when we were doing it, <coughs> but I might, no, February. That was in the episode that released, right? Um, I could double check if you want. I'm okay. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna believe myself to say that it's probably when February, when we talked about it in March, was when it was released, um, or something along those lines. Whatever. <laughs> our our whole thing is weird. Okay, like just just ignore us. <laughs> um. Anyways, what I find it was five months ago. Yeah. Yeah. So. Again, long time, so I can't recall. I have to rewatch it again just to see what we were talking about. But one thing I do want to make mention of is that the scene, the crafting area, which was the Dark Falls chemical plant, I love how it's this brand new facility, and then it came back for Monster Blood, and it's this crappy, like, rundown, it's been left abandoned kind of look. And then when it came back as the book, we got the crappy version of it rather than like the monster blood version of it, rather than the one that came for the Dark Fall chemical, like the, the new brand new one. It's like, nah, Dark Falls is this crappy, <laughs> crappy uh, the place. You can't get to have it now. But anyways, um, yeah, that was like a pretty long silence. It's going to be cut out from the whole thing. So <laughs> you won't know. It would just be like like that. But like we, this is like, what, 10 seconds of nothing <laughs> because I was waiting for you to say something. And you're just kind of like it's almost like you're just letting me be the, the, the talker this this episode, which is weird. Because I, th you were the one who wanted to talk about this particular update, I think, or you well, suggested it because it makes sense because this is a September update, so why not? And well, then I yeah, guess but related the problem to was that. Okay, so the reason why I wasn't exactly so talked up is because um, uh, I was woken up at five o'clock in the morning because of my rowdy neighbors, so. I'm basically kind of sleepy. 
So we're both dead inside today. So that's partially it. I mean, it's appropriate for zombies, yeah. right? Or that, they're not zombies. They're apparently vampire zombies or like weird creatures. Or <laughs> the one thing I just remembered is that this was one Chuck and Eric was mostly featured in this book or this this update storyline. And what I thought was funny was that he keeps mentioning how they stink, right? It's like, oh, they stink. It's just like. I get it, because it's like, supposed to be rotten corpse, but they're not. It's just weird. It's weird. Like, Dr. Frederick is trying to make some sort of sense out of it, but, you know, it's an odd, odd update. <laughs> but, uh, it was pretty short, too, which is unfortunate, but, yeah. It's just, it's just interesting how everyone just decides to go, A, this prominent area... This this it's be prime real estate to put a chemical factory here just because, and then the mayor is just like yeah go ahead like every every up what why what is with the promenade being like the main center of just like uh, like here's the thing and like it's is, gotten to a point where the characters are self aware about that sort of thing I I made that happen I can talk about that when we get to maybe Christmas maybe if we want to talk about my update that I had involvement with but yes even the character is self aware that it seems like that's always the case but what was funny about this going back in a little bit before we started this whole thing when we we're talking about the angry video game nerd and nostalgia critic and all that stuff fun fact Originally, I wanted to be an angry reviewer, too. <laughs> and I had a name out as well. I was going to be called the Logical Reviewer. And uh, I don't know why. It was just a name I was going to go with. Never happened, by the way. <laughs> but I had recordings. Well, I, had I ended up recording stuff with a DVD player and had it recording the gameplay footage. So I had maybe in the future I might look at my old DVD recordings of like gameplay and just try to react to it or like over commentate over it. Maybe it'd be interesting. Because there were some things I played around with, which was like some weird reactions. Like one one time a game broke on me, which was weird how that seems to always happen with me when I'm recording. When I'm playing the game, just fine. When I record things, however, it just breaks on me. I don't know. It's like the Midas touch when it comes to glitches and whatnot. But anyways. I don't know if that's entirely appropriate, but. Yeah, that's entirely a proper rant for it's another another time. <laughs> <laughs> but well, I'm, I'm saying I don't know if that's entirely appropriate to go with, considering that, you know, the thing about the I'm sorry, I'm just a stickler for this sort of shit. But the Midas touch is just basically, you know, a guy turning shit into gold with his fingers. Yeah. But what I'm going with here is that every time whenever I play a game, anything I touch seems to just want to glitch out. I don't know why. So you just basically like, have an electronic black thumb. I guess. I have the Grit Glamoran living with me. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, got a glitch here. Glitch, glitch. <laughs> uh, yes, I'm I'm just cursed with that little goblin. But um anyways, with that talking though, when it comes to the dead house. Not a whole lot as well. I mean, I will say I do give credit for read. They like with the thing called Welcome to Dead House, you had to have the Dead House be featured, and they decided to use that as the um the spawn scene, which I'm happy that they decided to do that, and it looks pretty good. Well, it makes sense. Huh? Yeah, yeah, it does make sense. It it makes it look like a small little mansion almost, like not a huge mansion, but it's like a. I mean, I guess it's a house, but you know, it's it's just interesting. It's well, what, my understanding is uh it's kind of based on the episode of the same name where like uh the the fucking ghouls are just hiding in the walls and they're just breaking through. Yeah. The thing is though, which was interesting, was that the whole go um the the. The house itself also is supposed to be referencing to the book cover with the whole red light and everything like that. But what you yeah. mentioned with the story, the thing is, what's interesting is that they added stuff in there that was in the books. Like the whole reef is supposed to be like this good luck charm. And it's like, it's the reef. That's what's causing the house destroys. It. And it's like, ah, just kidding. That was actually the thing to protecting you. Now we can kill you. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. And I love it too, because Dawes is, 
appearance is taking inspiration to the actual actor who plays as Dawes. And what's funny about it is that um, one of the actors who played as the mask mutant for the TV series also played one of the zombies in the show. And he did. He talked about a funny story that happened where he had his kid come on the on the set, right? And he's like, "Okay, bring on the zombies!" And there's this whole horde of zombies. He's coming out and scared the crap out of the kid. And what was interesting too is that his wife was also working on there as well. But um, yeah, and the other thing too is that he ends up actually, um, and this is talking about with the goose, the Goosebumps crew podcast, right. and they ended up talking to. Um, the actor who plays as Compton Dawes in the TV series, which was interesting. So they actually got to talk to him. And what was fun about it is that in the actual story, he's supposed to be this young guy, right? And in the, in the show, he's a lot more older gentleman. But the thing is with both of these guys in the story and the TV series is that they are supposed to be like, acting like good guys like they're like oh i'm here to help you you know like it's like i'm realtor but you know i just want to make sure you're in the proper home you know if you need anything just let me know right kind of thing but then you know this game is just like nah shady guy he 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 just does it for the money and i love the accent i gave him too the whole southern accent type of thing (laughs) he's one of the voices i love to do just because. I'm not trying to scam y'all. That's just poppy. I'm just some the boy. I'm just here scam. to do my business. I'm not here to scam y'all. All I'm here is the silliest stuff. And he looks like the I'm guy who's trying to eat your stuff. brains. That's ridiculous. But secretly, I'm trying to eat your brains. Yeah. <laughs> Bug eye, <laughs> teacher. <laughs> I uh, love that insult from Mar. <laughs> Stand back, Joe, and I will protect you. <laughs> it's like trying to fool the Mar. Uh, the Mar. <laughs> For shame. Mar. Hmm. You're supposed to eat these to your children, and you never even did that. It's like, oh, I'm getting oh, yeah. to it. And the zombie. Do you know oh, how expensive spices can be these days? <laughs> The zombie, yeah, and the zombie horde, uh, the the brainless NPC that they got going on there, I believe was Ray from the show, or they were inspiration from yeah. Ray. <laughs> and the other yeah. weird thing too is that for some reason, when he's in a zombie form, his colors is different. Like it, it's like come almost like he got sucked out of his life for. Uh, have you ever played Banjo Tooie? Uh, no. Okay, well, this is for those who play Banjo too. I think you know where I'm going with this, but and one of the main plots of that was that there was this life form sucking machine because Gruntilda, the villain, was all bag of bones, and he was like, "I want to be alive again." So her, her sisters or her sisters decided to get this machine that's like sucks life out of things, right? And they ended up attacking one character and having all of the life source suck out of it. So that he became a zombie of sorts. So I was just like, that's probably why he's designed like so pale looking. Like his clothes is like so pale compared to like his brighter blue color. By the way, that's like I I love the style of his color. Like he's wearing baby blue tuxedo and all that stuff. It's like I don't know. You've never seen anybody stand out like that. And I don't know why, but his quest lines like One of them is dancing with Uncle Tony. I have no idea what the hell that is supposed to be referencing, but he's like dancing on top of a grave. And my two connections was... Who's Uncle Tony, Dawes? Who's Uncle Tony? Explain, Dawes, explain! (laughs) My only reference when I was looking at this, I kind of space, oh, maybe it's a reference to Soprano, so you had that, like, woke up this morning, I got myself... In the I mean, background, I, I haven't watched The Sopranos, so I wouldn't know it's possible. Yeah, no, I do love the videos I did for that episode, though. I love especially the whole when I ended with uh, the iconic Dawes revealing he's a zombie too, and they're running away from him. He's like, "Come back, Dark Falls needs you. I'm hungry." <laughs> <laughs> 
And then I had the ending of the Sopranos thing. It's like at the end, it's just, I don't know. I just thought that was funny. <laughs> I, just, I don't know. I love, I love the acting from the show. It's so stupid, but I love it. But um, the update itself, um, one of the weird things that came out of it was, um, I'm trying to think. It's like from the release. Oh, for some reason, when you get the character, his animations do not appear. You have to get the book in order for them to pop up. So the 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 items that he drops for him to do his animations are tied to the event, the the Dark Fall Chemical Plant thing. And what was interesting is that on the Promenade originally there was like I think a sign that was supposed to be like um, Dark Fall's chemicals. Like from the actual show, but he would never got this. It's only until after the event, like, became a book. That was the item that was also included, which was cool. And I love that sometimes that they redesign the, like, the promenade was designed as if, like, a school trip kind of coming into the promenade, as if they had a dark fall chemical plant right there. And then he had his house on the other side. So, again, I like the context when they try to explain the setup to the promenade to be like, oh, we have this thing going on here and this is cool. Unlike the the update back in 2021 for Halloween, when they said, oh, the promenade is dressed up. And it's like, what the hell are you talking about, kid? It never was dressed up. But that's a story for another time <laughs> when we ever get to that mess. But, um... <laughs> Yeah, lots to talk about, but uh, that's that's the thing with this update. It's this, this episode is just a bunch of stuff going on there. There, um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else to talk about as far as that stuff goes. I mean, mostly the highlight is the fact that Dawes is one of the good characters. The story itself is pretty okay, and um, I like. I felt like when I was playing the game or the event, uh, I managed to get the dead house uh, uh, scene through purchase. Oh yeah, because that was the it other wasn't thing like a... too. Yeah, that was the other thing too. Was that this update, as well as the the please don't feed the vampires. That was the other thing that was introduced with the other guy was the fact that once the event ends, you can actually buy the the pack which the actual monster scene in question, which is like cool. It's like oh, you get to have the event scene after the event ends. So it's like you can have a little piece of it, you know, here, which is nice, right? But um Yeah, that was like really ecstatic when I actually got my hands on the dead house. I was like, oh I really want that. I really want that. It was it, it, because it's like it looks like a little piece of like classic goosebumps history, you know, and I wanted to put it in my town. So I had to wait until I had the appropriate funds in order to get Dead House in order to, you know, put it into my town. Yeah. It's pretty nice, I will say that, and the story is pretty good too. I think they've decided to make that as a part of the main storyline, but I might be mistaken. I have to look at what they decided to do because they're just all over the place now with the continuity. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's just it's interesting with it's like it can work. What, what I understand with the stories is that main stories are basically stories that you have to read in order to understand the full picture of the thing. Side stories are basically like. You don't have to read these. You can you can go on your merry way on not needing to know because it's like its own separate storyline. So it's like, oh, there's this fun little thing that happened on the side, but it's not important, right? So that's the way I look at it. Which is weird because some of the books end up having to be main stories, like, you know, be afraid, be very afraid with, you know, because there's an overarching storyline when it came to Mrs. Johnson's whole downfall thing. So, yeah. It's interesting with, I don't know, like, again, it's whoever's in, in charge. And at this point, there's no one on the wheel besides, you know, one of the main people. But he has other stuff as well. So it's like, I don't know. I just hate how this game is being like a zombie of sorts. It's like, it needs it needs love, right? But, you know, I get it. But at the same time, it's it's frustrating. For me, because I like making content, and you know, with no content, it makes me a dull boy. <laughs> I've gotten so so bored right now that I've decided I might actually consider doing Steam Hams, but it's a Goosebumps Horror Town update. 
<laughs> no, no, really. It's uh, and the thing is, this thing was to be perfect for April Fools, but I'm so bored. I'm like, you know what? No, I'm doing it now. <laughs> and if you're curious, I don't know if I ever. I'm, I'm hoping I can release this before this episode pops in, but I don't know. We'll have to see. What, wait and see what happens. But the idea is basically, Chameleon is Principal Skinner, Theo is Superintendent Chalmers, right? Mara's is going to be Agatha. And the idea is basically this is taking place in a school. So it's actually supposed to play like the actual up, like the actual bit of the, you know, steam hams, but it's played as if it's like an update for the game, like a, a little quest line of sorts. Right. Right. So I had this whole thing going on, like just having fun with it. Just like, <laughs> you know, having both chameleon and, the shadow lord coming in and you might enjoy this because this gives me the opportunity to be able to voice chameleon the shadow lord again <laughs> and just to dial to make this seem like he's a bumbling fool <laughs> i'll get the print i'll get the superintendent on my side so i can get the children back to bell valley i'll make him a nice roast <laughs> And then, you know, he gets insulted by his other half. He's just like, she never really was a good cook. <laughs> and that's the other thing, too. Like, he, he has a full name as well as Theo does, right? So it would be, well, Mutler, I made it despite your whole direction. It's like, ah, Superintendent Gordon, nice to you come in. I hope you forget for unforgettable luncheon. <laughs> this is so stupid. And it's going to suck for me to because... It's going to be so stupid for me because in order for me to do this, I have to basically take screenshots, edit the bars, and add my own text to it, and add it as sites, as sites, because it's basically me, re, like, basically just reenacting this as if it was a gameplay thing, but it's, like, screenshots, but... Like, even to the point of just doing quest lines, so, like, when, when the quest is supposed to end before it gets to the next bit, it's, like, have Chameleon think about a plan and have, um, have, uh, Theo, like, and at some point, like, in the second episode, the uh, second part, it's just, like, ha craft monster raiders from the monster diner. <laughs> it's, like, that stuff like that, where it's just, like, make it seem like you're actually yeah. partaking in this off <laughs> Like, the, the... Yeah. I want to do this shit post because it's funny. It's like that's the one thing. It's like that's the that's the only goddamn content I can do with this game right now because there's nothing for me to go with. I did almost everything about this game, but no, <laughs> I have to make <laughs> I have to make my own content in order for entertainment. Ew, <laughs> originality. <laughs> originality, disgusting. <laughs> Ugh, originality? That's stupid. <laughs> I kind of feel like I want to gaslight people, too. It's just like, it's like, what's this? It's like, oh, this was an April Fool's update that happened this year. It's like, I never got, really? I, I, I'm just showing you. It, it did happen. <laughs> I never got a chance to do it until now. I thought it was really cool. <laughs> when I have kids, I'm going to tell them this was an actual event. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm debating, I'm debating too if I should throw myself at the end there because, like, I don't know if I should do Curly or me because I don't know if it would be Curly reading this and being like, what the hell did I just read? Or it would be me, or not me, but, you know, the Jacko character being like, what have I done? <laughs> it's like reflecting on what he just did. Just to kind of pinpoint, it's like, oh, man, this is a shit post. <laughs> But I don't know. No, what I would definitely go with Curly. It would be like, what, what the hell did I just, I just read? <laughs> Why did I just read? <laughs> it's just like added to the whole mess. And that's funny too, because I'm making it convincing. Like, it would be like, here's the thing if it was in the miniature quest line, I would fucking love that. Like, you wouldn't have to add new characters or anything like that. Just recycle old stuff. People would eat that stuff up. And that would be good for an April Fool's Day prank, and it'd be kind of funny. It'd be like it will adding memes. It's like, oh yeah, you know. But that's that's with people who actually have, like, you know, fans like us who's dedicated to a mobile game for God's sakes. But the other thing too, um, with it is, um, God, I've I've I've, I've so, I'm so clustered that I forgot what I wanted to say, which sucks. Uh 
I hate when that happens. I had a thought and it is gone. Out of my mind. Oh, don't worry, it'll come back. Yeah, in the worst possible time, we'll be talking about your update and be like, Oh, I remember! <laughs> it's just like, you know, <laughs> the worst possible time. It's just the stupidest thing. But, um, yeah, um, I got, I got, quickly before we get to our next segment, because I think we, we there's nothing else to talk about when it came to this particular, um, like, for... For Dead House, I think. I think we talked about most of the key points. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I haven't talked about or want to discuss in depth. Some of the items in that event were kind of weird. You mean like the the actual like you're not not not, not the crafting, but the actual like items. No, you... I'm talking about the crafting. I'm talking about the crafting. The crafting, okay, like. Oh, the ice cream and stuff. That was recycled stuff, by the way. Some of it, like the ice cream stuff and then like the living cream. Like, what the hell is the living cream doing? It's cool looking, don't get me wrong, but it's like, what? what is a living cream? My main concern is like, what was the purpose of making, like, adding those? Like, uh, they weren't exactly, they didn't seem really relevant to anything in particular. They're just like random <laughs> shit that you just throw together, like, Besides, oh, you throw an yeah. ectoplasm with ice cream and you get fucking ghostly smoothie. Besides the oh yeah, and they that's the other thing too. They was like um the ghostly the smoothie thing. They ended up getting rid of that once the update came in, like officially. And then one of the items ended up getting gone because they had to reuse that for uh something else, one of the other updates, which I think I wanna say was the plasma. They ended up having to drop that out because they used that for the uh, um the shocker on shock with with the uh, with the um, wolf boy and wolf girl so they had to just drop that item out and then they also dropped out the whole ghostly smoothie because that was completely useless you didn't use that for anything it was just like one of those recycled items they just added in there the only item I would say that actually makes some sort of reference is the final crafting item you make, because that was referenced within the storyline, where it's like, oh, we're going to use the zapper gun and melt the zombies, and then, you know... No, I get that. I get that. It's just the ice cream shit was just really random, of all things, and it's like, why am I making this? It seems like... like I know I'm supposed to, like, pile on to create the blaster gun and shit, but, like, it just seems so... <laughs> <clears throat> out there you know <laughs> um sorry just clearing my throat there i don't know got something stuck there but yeah no i agree it was it is totally random with that stuff but um yeah the craft the besides the crafting items the actual items you get were okay for the most parts i mean i get it, it was supposed to be kind of like I guess sciency in a sense, like it's supposed to be like school, like kind of like a school update, but not really. If that makes sense. I think what I liked about the, I think what I liked about the decorations is that it, it in a way, it's trying to pretend to be like eco friendly when in actuality it's secretly just being like this fucking toxic chemical waste that's like polluting everything. It's anything but like, oh, we're getting a three yeah, exactly. movie theater. Like a 4D movie theater? No, we're not. Instead, we're getting a chemical plant. Isn't that equal? Like, isn't that like not equal friendly? It's like, oh no, no, we're using only the friendliest of eco, like the chemicals for the environment. Look, it's green. That means it's eco friendly. Yeah, see, <laughs> just shows so like a oh, okay. toxic, glowing green ooze. Yeah, <laughs> I can totally see that. But, <laughs> but like, it makes sense for the prominent because it is dumping that sh crap outside the door. <laughs> Duh. Like, why is there, like, monsters outside the water? So it's like, oh, don't worry about that. <laughs> it's like, oh, oh uh, they're monster. just skinny dipping. That's all. And then he got the, they got the, the squeezers coming out of the waters, and it was like, <laughs> <laughs> ah! No. It's like, I tried to pour some of, I accidentally poured some of this goop on the, on, on the floor, and it started eating away at the floorboards. Should I be concerned? Nah, it means it's hungry. Nah, it's just hungry. <laughs> <laughs> just don't touch it. <laughs> I'm losing if you want to keep your hair. fingers, don't touch it. I'm losing my hair. That's okay. I That's grungy ones. 
I got his third arm. It's like it's, it's like it's almost like a toxic waste plant, but it's not. It's like I don't even yeah. know what chemicals it is. This is a chemical plant. It's supposed to again. It's referencing the book, right? Because they were very not description. It was like, oh yeah, they did a chemical factory. Everyone died because of gas. Yeah, <laughs> it's just like yeah. okay. So, so they didn't really go into depths with that, but you know, it's 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 whatever, right? But yeah, um. For the most part, I do like it. Like, you know, I, I think ignoring how badly it was set up in the time we've got, everything else about it was, it was okay. It was decent for what it is. It was faithful. I love the character. That's basically it. I wish there was a little bit right. more with it, but it works for what it is. I enjoyed no. Uh... Yeah, I enjoyed like some of the story of it alone. It was short, and, and yeah, I kind of wish it was a little longer. That was the that's the other complaint is it wasn't it wasn't long enough. But I yeah. guess they did what they could do. Right. Um. Anything else to add from that, or no? That's about it. Okay, that's that's what I figured. So let's go ahead and move on to our main discussion, I guess, because we're pretty much done here. And then I get reminded of that one thing I want to talk about out of nowhere. Maybe we'll, we'll <laughs> find out. We'll find out together. Right. So now we're going to be discussing the main update here. Now the thing is, the last clip we sent to you last update was a meme from a very good show, Futurama, which was joking about the wax robots. And it's pretty much a dead giveaway because there's only one book in the entire series that talks about wax figures. And what is that update? Welcome to the Wicked Wax Museum. Yay! Here we go. So this is the Yay. vampires you're gonna be talking about, and quite honestly, the one thing I will say is that, uh, yeah, like, what is with this Morticia Adams looking character in the front? I know that's supposed to be the the main bad guy of sorts, like with uh, bad so girl, girl, <laughs> wicked. <right? laughs> oh. The other thing too, I wanted to, before you get to talk about this stuff. I don't know if you added this character in here, but I think one of the one of the characters you come across is called the Strangler, and I'm just reminded of that SpongeBob yes. episode. It's a Strangler. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I'll 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 be able to talk about the Strangler when I get there. But okay, I just I just I'm just reminded of the ep SpongeBob episode with the Strangler, just like. It's like, uh, like I think I left, I think I left my door. I'm like, oh, I locked my door locked. Let me go up here. All right, fine, I'll help you up. Good thing I'm wearing my cleats. Cleats. Oh, <laughs> 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 oh. <laughs> yeah, he pulls it out. Oh, there, there, Barty girl. I'm so sorry. Let's just go inside with my key to hide underneath the mat. <laughs> 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 he gets so pissed off. I love it too. He's like. With his dirty hands. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can see, like, the uh, uh, stinky uh, yeah. Yeah. air lines off of it. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Old SpongeBob is great. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. He's <laughs> the strangler. <gasps> I'm the strangler. Wow. As if you knew the guy. Oh, for God's sake. I'm the strangler. Hey, how did you do that with a thing? Oh, it's a fake, you moron. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but, yeah anyway so the so what i did for the concept design for sybil wicked is that i wanted to incorporate the cover of what people would assume was her with uh the her comic appearance in download and die which is the I guess it's a mix of the description of her and the book, I think, if I'm remembering. Because the cover the art book described her as having someone with like with uh different patches of uh faces on her. Yeah. And and in the in the actual cover art I think was done by Mark, if I'm not mistaken. 
he drew her yeah. almost like being a Morticia Adam looking, and he's like melt, like her face is normal, but it's like melting. Like he's like, oh, she's made out of wax. Woo! <laughs> and that's kind of why I wanted to make Sybil Wicked look kind of waxy because. To me, I feel like her face is constantly melting, so she just like patches different wax, uh, different wax faces on her, so that way it would it would try and stay and in, intact. Yeah, but you know, she just keeps on melting. Yeah, like ice cream, right? Dawes, right? Yeah. Dawes, mm, like right, ice cream right. man, yummy ice living cream. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so we, so Sybil Wicked is the only and is the only playable character that you get to use. Uh, other characters that will be involved include Axel, who is the servant of Sybil Wicked. What does he look like? Um, I described him as looking like Lewis from Mystery Skulls. Nice. Yeah. So I kind of like imagine him as like being this like. You know, like the the archetype of villains, where you have like the small bad person, but the yeah. large bodyguardish type. Yeah. Like, uh, uh, fuck, what was her name? Uh, Darla Dimple and Max. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Speaking of the, by the way, I just want to. Sorry. Um, speaking of your artwork and whatnot, I I do want to throw out there from last episode. I know I described stuff like, oh, this is what I visionize, but then Vampire will take that and then make it better. So he made the characters like, for example, Mister Craven look like a Skinner almost character, right? Meanwhile, <laughs> speaking of <laughs> Principal Skinner, yeah, yeah, mm, Steam Hams. <laughs> if he came into the game, I would totally use him instead. Mm, steam <laughs> Come here, mm, Mr. Steam. Kruger. What's up? <laughs> Get out of here, stop. <laughs> What's up, bitch? What do you want, bitch? That's some good shit. <laughs> uh anyways, yeah, um yeah. And then you know, he you do he do actually designed um Fran to be kind of like uh Almost like you know, she's actually a child, but she had like Frankenstein hands, so she's like almost like Nina Cortex esque in a sense. So yeah, she's strong, but it makes no like context. Like oh, there's this bully character coming in. It's just a little girl. <laughs> you scared of a little girl? So I don't know. Like, well, the reason why I made her like that is mainly because you know, uh, uh, according to the lore that Grim provided during that episode. Uh, the last time that Marty has seen her was when they were in fifth grade. Yeah. So I decided to incorporate a bit of that aspect into her design, but give her like big ass strong hands. Like she's still kind of like the type of person Monster you don't hands. want to fuck around with, mainly because of those hands, right? Because one punch from her and you're most likely going to be exploding. It's like, it's like what you call it, the when, when North Star, it's like, you're already dead. Nani? Shh. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> and then you see like <laughs> Ray appear with like a glowing eye and just like punches someone really hard and just goes <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Jojo style. Yeah. Or lightly punches somebody and just two forces just forces. Like kind of Dragon Ball Ste style that's just like smacking, like making craters on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> or better yet, instead of like just lightly smacking, it's just like a flick from one of her fingers, and you're just like set flying. <laughs> oh, the, the, oh, it's like oh, the doggy got like hit her the ball underneath the this big big building. Hold on, <laughs> here, you go get it. There you go, doggy, and it puts the thing down. It's like she just picked it up with her hand. This almost reminds me of that episode from Dan versus with the whole um Canadian um Canadian Mounties. Like oh, I can't do that. <laughs> All right, goodbye. Eh? He just picked. He just picked it in his own <laughs> bare hands. But, eh. Anyways, sorry, I just digress. I just want to point it out that whenever we do these updates, just know that I'm giving him the the pictures after the fact, so it could be however it's going to look like in the future. So just just know that. But anyways, go on. Right. So the next character is Doctor Izzy Wicked. 
Now, Dr. Izzy Wicked is Sybil's father. Now, um, in terms of Sybil, her face is melting, but uh, she's entirely made of wax. She's a wax golem. And, oh. uh, and she, uh, according to what I have described for her, a wax golem to make look, bleh, sorry, let me try that again. A wax golem made to look like a beautiful woman. Sybil uh, was 14 when she died in a terrible house fire. So that's like something similar to like uh, Ghost Next Door. Her father, Izzy Wicked, reanimated her, but she's constantly melts and needs new faces to keep her face intact. You know what would help her if she was in the freezer? Yeah, like Mr. Freeze. Yeah, she didn't think that through. She needed a Mr. Freeze outfit, and she'll be just fine. <laughs> but, yeah, it kind of has a house of wax to it, doesn't it? Like, feel to it, like the yeah. whole idea. And then what's interesting, too, is the whole, um, with the description of that, it's, um, great, I'm, I'm in the middle. I was in the thought process, and I forgot again. <laughs> just <laughs> ig ignore me. I don't know my life anymore. <laughs> I'm dead inside, remember? I'm a zombie. So the next character is... Drumroll. <laughs> the Strangler. Oh, boy. Yes. <laughs> My favorite. So I described the Strangler as a hockey mask wearing serial killer that strangles people. So I wanted him to be based on Jason Voorhees. What? Because, you know... I don't know if we even gotten a Jason reference in Horror Town yet, so I decided to just throw one in. Uh, I mean, hmm, I, I don't know for sure. I mean, you could just, it'd be interesting if he actually looks like a hockey player when he does that, because, you know, the whole, unless they could, they probably have an interesting design to it as well. But yeah, like, like I've seen people. Well, I was just them. thinking of like, I was just thinking of like giving him a hockey mask, but giving him like a uh, fucking overalls. Yeah, the, 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 I've, I've seen people make jokes about that kind of thing, too. You know what it kind of reminds me of, too? Um, that, that character from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles with the with the hockey mask. What's his name? Oh, I know which one you're talking about. Yeah. I don't know his name. Either, yeah, yeah. Like, he's he's like a... He was like an antagonist for the Turtles before but then he became eventually a, becoming like an ally. Anti, yeah, anti-girl type. So, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I don't know. It's just interesting with hockey masks. You can make an interesting design out of it to kind of pitch the knots. It's like, oh yeah, it's like Jason Voorhees, but not really. <laughs> He's not a mindless zombie. I mean, well, I guess technically. Oh, great. I remember what I wanted to talk about. Um, So she, you said she was like a... Oh, there it is. There it is. You're so, like, when, you're talking about golem, when you were talking about a, a wax golem, I'm reminded of that legend of the golem that was made by uh like clay that the um yeah. what do you call those people um the jewish people made right that that type of golem that you would put a scroll in their mouths to be like all right this is what i want you to do and then they'll do it kind of thing right uh, everyone like who remember like yeah everyone who was watched like old movies would remember that one or the simpsons episode when they had the golem there that also works because at some point near the end he had a bride made out of play-doh well technically it was you know inspired by that movie yeah i know i know i'm I'm just saying you know just if for people who don't know that that gone that far age or he knows about the horror stuff it's just like i only really know modern stuff it's like okay it's simpsons it's like oh i know that you know so it's like easy comparison but yes anyway so we got that we got her father, which is by the way, what does her father look like? Like, I imagine him being a small man, but maybe not. Um, I haven't really gotten that far yet, but I'll think of something. Okay, I can. <laughs> all right, all right. He can look like how um, the talk was supposed to be in the movies. <laughs> what he his old design was supposed to look like? I don't know. Uh, then there are two other wax figures that were actually uh, – so in the Wicked Wax Museum book, uh, it makes mention to some of the um, universal monsters like Dracula and the creature from the Black Lagoon. Yeah. Oh, I, I was just thinking of something. 
her father could look like Vincent Price. Maybe. There's a little nod to the the fact that Vincent Price played a main bad guy in the movie The House of Wax, which was also a 3D gimmick. It's like, ooh, 3D. <laughs> but that's actually not a bad idea. Yeah, and he he's a he's a great looking actor too. You know, he's very funny. I love his I love his personality. You know, great 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 guy. You know, but uh, that's a suggestion. But anyways, we we'll continue. Sorry, I'm just, so I just the add two it. wax figures. So the two wax figures are a nod to the Universal monsters or Universal Studios monsters, which are Dracula and the creature from the Black Lagoon. But the creature from the Black Lagoon is just referred to as Sea Monster. Yes, generic Sea Monster. <laughs> All right, you so know, those are the characters, by the way. Yeah. You sound like you were going to say something. I was just going to say, if they really want to be lazy, they could just have... Um, they could just reuse monsters that we already have in the game and be like, oh, they're wax figures. If they really want to be lazy about it, like the 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 sea monster per se, they can take a piranha person, just color them, recolor them, and be like done. Just like they could just, it's just like the what they did with Poison Lake with the lake monster. It's like, ah, oh, yes, it's just uh, it's a swamp monster, but you know he's blue, <laughs> he's turquoise blue. There's your. I mean, they could do that. They could just do like a piranha person thing, and then instead of like you know having to redo one for Dracula, they could just use like. Uh, one of the vampires from Nightwing's castle, and just call him Nosferatu or some shit. Yeah, or they can. Yeah, you know what? They can actually make him black and white. So it's like, oh, it's like no. Yeah, you could do that. <laughs> Again, if they want to save up money. That's the other thing too, by the way. I just want to do a little rant now. I remember what I wanted to talk about. Look at that, folks! Yeah, there it is. It, it happened. Wow, we predicted it. My biggest complaint with the game. Is why on earth I get it that the, the, the it takes time to make new content and stuff like that. Why on earth do they not just redo updates? Like they just re-release them, right? Why don't they do that? It gives them more profit. It gets people to be able to play older events that they might not get characters for, right? And it gives them more like because people who come in new never experience those stuff, and it's just like. It's it's just money profit to them, and they don't have to really do anything. It's just like just re-release and there you go, just all done. But no, no, they just don't they don't do that, you know. And they'd be like, oh, the new content is coming, but here's some old stuff to keep you occupied or keep you entertained, right? But what do I know? I I don't own the company. Anyways, that my rant's over. Well, no, I get it, I get it. Uh, so special buildings. So, the special building that, um, so the first one is the Wax Museum, and that yep. is the spawn that summons Sybil, Axel, the Strangler, and a Wax figure. So it doesn't, so it's decided on whether it's going to be the Nosferatu or the Sea Monster. Oh, so uh, it randomly after the, it? What's that? And does it randomly choose it, or is it kind of like them, com like, paired up, like their buddy duo? Um, it's up to them. I don't really care. Um, so after the event, when collected, it would just be referred to as the Wicked Wax Museum instead of just Wax Museum. Yeah. Uh, important um, question before you continue. The Wax Museum, is it just a normal building that's like a wax museum or is it also made out of wax itself? Like that one awful reason. I feel like... I feel like I wanted to make it like inspired by a specific building, but have like candles everywhere or like really large candles. Okay, so it's so it's not like an actual wax museum building, but it's just like waxy material outside of it kind of thing. Well, no, it's just like a regular building, but it has like elements that you can tell that it has wax. So it's so inside. big. So just think of a big candlestick with a big flame on top kind of thing or it's like droop droopings no. on top of it like no 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 because like i said it's just going to be like a regular building but it's going to have candles like at the ends of the of the building 
All right, I'm just going to throw in whatever I think would be good for a whack museum that looks spooky, I guess. And then I would just right. call that a day and be like, that's it. There you go. That's your reference. <laughs> like, I've always been doing it. Uh, so the next one is Izzy Wicked's Wax Factory. This is the crafting area. Oh, okay. I think so there was a point the in the book where um, there is a closed off section of the wax museum where the wax figures are made yeah and i get and this is where um izzy or civil depending on who mm. uh takes people into this area and turns them into wax figures of themselves or just other characters like they've just kind of put them in a mold uh if I remember correctly, I think it was themselves. Okay, so just kind of like how they do in the the actual the House of Wax type of films. Yeah, yeah. And speaking of that the House scary. of Wax, that's that was scary, especially the the remake. Like I, I know I, I crapped on the remake version, but it's kind of disturbing in a sense too. Like imagine that you're just kind of like you're stuck at wax type of thing. Someone cuts your face off. You actually see a bit of that stuff. And it's just like, you can feel the pain, but you can't emote or anything. You're just stuck. All right. So the next, speaking of the house of wax, <laughs> the next one is um, called Sybil's house of wax. What does that look like? And this is, the, uh, I kind of wanted to make it like a, like a really spooky looking house. But similar to the wax museum, it would just have like elements of like uh, wax related things like, uh, I guess, like wax mannequins and candles and shit. I feel like I just want to go ahead and go to like one of those, you know, those um things like um, what do you call it? Those little miniature figures show like, you know, little buildings that they got going on. Like you want to make your own little town. Yeah, like they do that's like for arts and crafts stores i think there's a company that does this but they always do these like like either christmas towns or even halloween towns i feel like i can just type in house like house of wax that company and it'll pop in on at an actual building and be like that's that's the building <laughs> that right there <laughs> it's spooky and it looks cool there you go inspired that and lastly, there is one uh, uh, special building that drops the raw item. Okay, so is this the when you place down, or is that in the crafting area? I mean, the spawn. I mean, promenade. It's in the promenade. Okay. Yeah. So this one is called Axel's Limousine. Okay, yeah. I, I already know what this is referencing. And um, at, and the limousine drops the raw item, which is going to be known as the wicked wax candle. Okay, and I think he re I did see this one. I think which is like it looks like. Um, let me see if I can get the picture out when you keep talking for a moment. So the suppliers for the for the uh, raw item will be just referred to as uh, wax figures, and you can just place them wherever. Uh, they also drop wicked wax candles. Now, are the wax figures just kind of like, uh, like a, like almost like mannequins in a sense, but just like actual, like yeah, but yeah, so it's like monitor. they'll just be like mannequins. Yeah, I kind of figured as much. They could either be like mannequins or busts or something. Yeah. So the currency of this event is going to be candles, which are just going to be. Uh, which are just going to look like birthday candles of various colors. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I did see the wicked wax candles. It was like, um, you, you've designed it so that there's like two candle stick, like, the, like it's on a, a chandle. What do you call those candle things? Like the holders, but there's like two of them. Candle like, yeah. And I think that's what you designed it as originally way back when. Yeah, but I, I'm going to be redesigning it where, uh, according to what I have here, the Wicked Wax Candle is going to look like a purple wax finger with a lit wick. Okay, that's a lot cooler because I also see there's like Sylvie's yeah. Choker and then Sylvie's Wicked Hand Mirror. Uh, the hand mirror is going to be uh, something that I am going to implement, but the choker isn't. 
Uh, so the decorations, there are one, two. There's going to be 10 decorations. Okay. Or at least I have 10 decorations listed. All right. So the so the first one is uh, called the deboner. Uh, de I I know what that's supposed to be, but um, it, it it you know it sounds bad. I know, I know. So the what? deboner is described as a large vat used to debone victims. There's a hold on a second. Like just keep going on. I think I might have a better name for it, but just just go. On. I is that part of the well. It, Described as a deboner in the book. Stein, what were you thinking? This was way before, you know. I know this was before the end of that happened, but the... still. But I know that so, there's, there's a movie here that I want to because it's a really bad movie, but it does have some sort of device that uh, might be of interest. Name, but let me. Bone stripper, that's so what the, it is. <laughs> what do you call it? The bone stripper. Now, now that's even worse. <laughs> it can't make it sound good. I'm sorry. Okay, the deboner it is then. So, uh, the next item is called the powerless lever. So, powerless in quotations. Okay. Uh, so, it is described as a lever that drains one's energy. And this is, and the, the idea of it is going to be based on the pointless button from the Astiff movie uh, series. Okay, I'm I know That's of that button movie button. series, Alex, but I've never really paid like watched or paid attention to it. I just know that it was made by the guy who also worked with Ed's World, Tom Scott. Yeah, Tom. Uh, so the next one is the Strangler Wax Figure, which is pretty self-explanatory. Mm -hmm. uh, vampiric Wax Figure, also self-explanatory. Would have been interesting if the actual Strangler character like was actually a spawn scene, kind of like how uh, like, like, Wolf Girl. Yeah, if only, if only. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Uh, next one is the Sea Monster Wax Figure. Yeah. And here's another wax figure that was actually mentioned in the book. Executioner wax figure. Oh. So that's easy to just, so, you know, take, just take the model and just put them on a stand and there you go. Yeah, pretty much. It, wax figure of the Lord High Executioner as described. Mm-hmm. Uh, I must have the next really one, loved that one. Ah, I'm pointing not so the next one, books. The next one is called the facelifter. I was hoping you'd bring that up. Because that was one of the big things that came from the Goosebumps, the game show. Like, you know, when he had the monster mask on you, it's just like there's certain ways to take off. And the only way to take off the monster mask is, or the Honda mask was the defacer. <laughs> You had to literally the facelifter. The, 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 the facelifter, basically. You had to put that on and it would actually help remove the mask. And it was like, oh, that, that makes sense. It's like that that's a cute nod they put in that video game. But yeah, like that's the only reason I know about that. It sounds like they did their research on that one. But anyway, oh, no, you can't uh, tell. That's one of the reasons why it's one of those highlight ones or one of those, you know, fun ones. So I have it described as a device that steals faces. It looks like the Fazbear trap in the FNAF movie, but has a doll's face rather than Freddy's face. Oh my god! <laughs> the shock is. <laughs> uh, the next one is exercise wheel, which is a large exercise wheel. Yeah, I can see that. Um, if I'm remembering correctly, I think they called that torture Freddy, because of course they did. Whatever. <laughs> I didn't know that. Anyway, well, I mean, the, uh, the fans the like to name things out of anything, right? Like, like you know, Scrap Chica. It's just like, you know, the the fans, the FNAF fans are an interesting bunch. Just like. <laughs> yeah. uh, so the next item is Vat of Hot Wax. Uh, a large vat of hot wax with a wax figure on a chain dangling above. It's a this is the. What's that? 
I was just saying, it sounds so morbid when you think about it. Like, you know, it's like, yeah, it, it was a kid friendly, but it's like, imagine that's actually a real person. It's just like, oh boy. Like, can this you is basically the, this is basically the thing that's used for, you know, turning people into the wax can figures. Can you imagine an animation where it's just using that thing where one of the characters is just dangling and he just gets dunked in and out? <laughs> <laughs> Kind of like being like a fucking tea bag. No, well, no, it's almost like um, what do you call those things? It's like getting drowned, like a drown, like um. There's a device that does that, but I can't for the life of me remember what it is. It's like one of those torture devices, like a dunk thing, but I don't know. Yeah. Uh, last on the list is skin scraper. Hmm. So I describe this thing as a cross between an Iron Maiden and a cheese grater. An uh, an Iron Grater. <laughs> an Iron Grater. <laughs> so the items are very small in terms of like quantity. Hmm. So the first one is the raw item, which is the Wicked Wax Candle purple finger with a lit wick. Yeah. Uh, the next one is the wax bust. So the wax bust requires two of the candles and fake hair. Okay. Uh, the next one is strangler's mask. Right. Uh, strangler's mask. Sorry. No, no, let's continue. So, uh, Strangler's Mask requires two of the candles, as well as the evil haunted mask. That's interesting. Uh, next is the Wicked Mirror. That requires two of the candles and a makeup kit. And then lastly is the Sybil Wicked Bust. And this requires the Wax Bust, the Strangler Mask, and Sybil, or the Wicked Mirror. Okay. Now, the reason why I picked the mirror is because one of the ways of defeating Sybil Wicked is yeah, that she had to look at herself in the yeah. reflection. Yeah, it's just the whole, like, oh, I'm ugly. <laughs> yeah. It's actually pretty gruesome how she dies, too. Her entire yeah, face fucking yeah, melts. I was about... like a skull. And I don't know if this was Stein's writing this, or this was, like, the his ghostwriter. <laughs> Because that's that's debatable, right? Like we we don't know for sure. He say, he claims that he wrote every book, but that's highly doubtful. He was okay to like, have ghostwriters for like the spinoffs, right? So, like I know that's I know that a lot of the uh, Give Yourself Goosebumps books are very silly in terms of their choices. Especially but a lot the, of the stuff in this book in particular are very gruesome and terrifying. Especially, no, I mean, the thing is, is it's like the books are like, when it comes to depths, it's like really bad. Like they try to make a funny spin on it, but it's like really gruesome when you think about it. But yeah, the silly endings, like one of them is being literally in the beginning is like, oh, here's this haunted house. Do you want to go in or do you want to leave? And it's like, oh, I want to leave. It's like, why do you want to leave? You, you know what book you picked up, you stupid, you big baby. Go ahead and go outside and cry and come back when you're being a man. <laughs> it's like, you, read the kids the like, you gave me the option. <laughs> It's like, yeah, no, I don't it's like, oh, I thought you wanted to be a big kid. Why don't you just go in your little corner and read some you Franklin, cry. you baby? You big baby. <laughs> cry. <laughs> so anyway, uh, uh, so I only have three people with quests listed so far because I was so busy with everything else, I couldn't exactly get everything or, uh, sorted out or anything. So, the first of the characters is Dustin. Okay. Dustin has Escaping the Deboner. <laughs> now, unfortunately, I don't have what he would draw for that, but... That's fine. He just does an animation. They can figure it out. Uh, the next one is Cuddles. Okay. Cuddles has Try the Exercise Wheel. And that one drops a wax bust. 
How do you see that animation going? I kind of see it as like him just running into the uh, running in the wheel and the wheel just like spinning around and stuff. Okay, so they would have to animate the wheel as well and put it on top of it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, then Sybil Wicked has three. Okay. So the first one is use the facelifter. Uh, so this one drops the witch mask. Is I'm assuming she uses it on herself, right? Uh... Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you had her using it, so it's like I'm just thinking because I'm trying to think. Yeah, like, but again, like I said, I don't have everything sorted. You know, she she does this thing. She you know she does her face reliever. There's like a blank face. She takes another face, puts it on. It's the same face, and she does this recycling thing where it's like, oh, I don't like this face. Put a new face on. <laughs> It's like that recycling. It's just like that's because they like to have a loop going on, right? So it's like you know, endless faces. She's just putting and removing off her. Yeah, but remember, the facelifter doesn't exactly grant that option. It just like it's just basically torture, Freddy. I know, but I don't know unless she's using it on Dustin or whoever you have involved in this. Well, actually, I do have I do have a protagonist in mind. Okay. Anyways, what, so what the next, animation she got going on? So the next one she has is called Patchwork. Okay, I can see that. And this is her trying to like you know uh, fix her face because it's slowly starting to like peel off and stuff. Yeah. And she's just like you know panicking and trying to fit everything back together, but you know another like she holds like tries to hold one piece and then another like slides off she uses her other hand to hold that off and then like another piece falls off somewhere else and she just uses one of her other hands to try and put that off up and it recycles yeah endless torture and then the last one and then the last one is looking for faces how will that look <laughs> uh it's just one of those walking style animations all right, so it's going to be like a magnifying glass or, you know, kind of doing the whole no. thing around or. Yeah, she's just going to look like side to side and she's like, the thing, uh, and she is like pondering whose face to steal. Hmm. So the patchwork drops Voodoo Doll and looking for faces drops the evil haunted mask. Okay. Um. So. Oops. So the basic idea is that the main protagonist of the story is going to be here's a here's a bit of a curveball. It's going to be Megan. Really, you're going to have her involved. Okay, well, that's going to be interesting for the next episode. I I originally wanted to go with Crystal, but I didn't want to implement too much of her, you know. Yeah, you already did her last time with um Yeah, I did her with uh Comic Shop of Horrors, but this time it's going to be Megan. Okay. Because she's at least one of those uh, freemium characters. Yeah. I had an idea with Megan as well, but that will be for another time. So the basic idea is... Now, this is the part where I couldn't write down a whole summary of the plot or anything. But basically, the kids go to a wax museum because... You know, it's one of those field trips or one of those really boring field trips that the kids don't really want to go to, but they kind of have to because, you know, it's education. <laughs> and they go it's, to the civil wax museum. To. The wax museum. It's just like, oh, wait, if I use my imagination, we could get out of here. Kids, instead of going to the wax museum, we're going to uh, the wax museum. Damn my imagination. <laughs> <laughs> Go orange, go apple, go, go banana. banana. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, it's just oh crazy. my god, my boy's a max figure. You hear that? A wax figure. <laughs> Where are we going? We could be falling into these machines. 
But anyway, so they go to the wax museum and they get greeted with uh by Izzy Wicked, who is the curator of the museum. Okay. So, you know, he takes the kids in, you know, does his little thing, introduces the wax the uh, wax figures and all that other stuff. And from the corner of the and from like the darkest corners of the wax museum, Sybil Wicked was looking at this group of kids and notices Megan. And because she knows that her face is falling apart, she thinks that she would do a lot better with a new face, and that was gonna be Megan's. Mm. So uh I like I said, I don't exactly have the whole thing thought out which is kind of sad yeah it is very sad i was so busy with so much other crap i couldn't be able to work on it fuck uh make it up on the spot let me see if I can just, just see if I can... <laughs> yeah entertain us clown me. <laughs> like i can imagine someone with like a whip it's like entertain them clown <laughs> Yes, you were mute. But, uh, dance, monkey, dance. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see if I can just make up shit as I go along. I did it with a uh, fucking comic shop of horrors. Let's see if I can do that with Wiki yeah, Wax. There we go. Uh, let's see. So uh, kids are exploring the wax museum. Uh, uh, Sybil tries to. Uh, Tempt Megan to follow her into the restricted area, mm -hmm. which is the uh, which is the wax factory. Yeah, and you know Megan, like you know, is curious about who's talking to her, but she gets distracted by everybody else. Like, oh, look at this thing! Look at this thing! Hey, Megan, come check out this thing! Oh, and she's just like runs off to check off the wax figures, and Sybil's <laughs> like, God damn it! So eventually, like, you know, uh, uh, like, eventually she gets, like, extremely fed up. And, like, as soon as, like, everybody goes to the section of the factory where or the wax museum where the wax figures are made, uh, Sybil is like, okay, enough of this. And I might as well just do it by force. So she has Axel as well as uh, uh, the straggler and the other wax figures come to life to, you know, um, Basically, turn the kids and the teacher, which is Mark, into wax figures and take uh, Megan so she can steal her face. You know what's sad? We don't have another teacher character. We just have Mars. Like, yeah, Mars is the teacher for all the kids. Sorry. <laughs> what? Yeah, sorry. Good you're great teacher? Nah, you're all teachers. <laughs> so, during the struggle, uh, uh, I was going to have, like, the Strangler, like, be the one to try and uh, subdue Megan, uh, Megan, but during the struggle, uh, Megan's little makeup mirror falls off, and um, Sybil accidentally glances at the mirror, and this shows her reflection. And becoming just completely disgusted with her appearance, she almost, you know, uh, melts her face entirely. Okay. So, as soon as she runs off to try and hide from the mirror, like, all the other wax statues and Axel decide to, you know, go with her, and everyone else leaves. And, because it's a mindless uh, mindless. Yeah. Yeah. It... So, then, uh, Sybil Wicked, like, vows revenge to get Megan's face. And if not Megan, then someone else. Which would allude to Crystal, but you know, I'm not gonna just say that outright. I mean, there are other like attractive female characters like Yvonne and shit, but you know. And then Crawley does his end page. And this is the end of the story. Pretty I like this story. Player. <laughs> I like this story. <laughs> Stuff indulging himself. But yeah, like I said, this is going to be a completely short thing, considering that that's all I basically have for it, and I had to make up the rest on the spot. Yeah, you really just went 
quickly on that. All right. <laughs> well, have... hopefully the next thing I talk about won't be as, you know, disorganized. Probably not, because you have such a big plan for that one. But uh, I'm getting, oh, ahead, yeah, we're getting yeah. ahead of ourselves. Before we do that, though, story quest line for Sylvia, because or Sylvie, since we're getting her. Sybil. Sybil, whatever. Um... <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> it's like my name is Sybil. Basically... I don't care. You're whatever I call you. It's like Yvonne. It's basically... no, Yvonne. That's your name because you have a stupid E at the end. So basically, uh, the quest line with Sybil is that it's a glimpse of her past of how she died in a house fire. And how her father tried to reanimate her as a wax figure. But because of the soul uh, containing warmth, it slowly melts the wax figure. And this wax figure uh, seeks out other faces to try and fix her own. So it starts off slowly with just using other wax figures to patch together in this Frankenstein-esque uh, collection of faces. Yeah. But then, like, eventually it leads to uh, uh, at a certain point where uh, she decides, you know what doesn't melt? Human faces. So I might as well just grab a human face. And that's when it leads up to the idea of, you know, the kids going to the wax museum for like a little field trip sort of shit. Could you imagine, like, probably she might be the one who actually did that invitation type thing with the school or something like that. Oh, yeah, it was her idea, and her father is kind of like... Uh, Oblivious, or...? is one of those things, Is like, he's so glad to have his daughter back that he'll do anything she says. So he's a slave to her daughter, in a sense? Can you imagine? Yeah, sort of, yeah. Can you imagine if she actually stole somebody's face and then she ended up glancing the mirror and she ends up melting and it's like this big puddle of, of wax and then you got this realistic face just sitting on top. <laughs> it's like, oh, oh boy. It's like that, it's almost like Roger Rabbit scene with Dodge Doom. It's just like this blob of like, like flesh. <laughs> but that's basically all I have for it. Okay, that's that's the whole thing. Unfortunately, yeah, I wasn't exactly in depth with this as I am with the future thing I would be talking about, but yeah, you know, yeah, hush, you, hush. you're making you're hyping it up, so you better be, you better. Oh be yeah, ready. yeah. I swear to God, I'm hyping it up for it because you got two more <laughs> after this, and then that's it, and then then and then we end up doing our reviews, and we see which one's the best and which one is the worst. In our yeah. opinions. I'll be curious to see what you think of mines. <laughs> I I don't know. I'm kind of. Uh, we'll see. We'll I'm see looking forward to it. it. Hmm. I'm said. I said I'm looking forward to it. Oh, I'm, I'm sure you are. Ah. <laughs> uh, no, I just sounded like fucking fucking the mic board. I say, I say, I'm looking forward to it, boy. I say, I say. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're referencing old stuff from old um, podcast episodes. You know, like like the, the. I'm surprised. You know what's? You know what happened? We were talking about the ending, like the end updates when we always have to be like the final quest is like you get the prize item, which is usually a statue, and then I think after we did the Gronk kissing thing, it's just like, nah, we're not doing that no more. <laughs> we never talked about it ever since. It's like, nah, nah, we got, a, we ruined it, so. The fucking kissing girl. <laughs> that's still the best, by the way. I still love that. That's, that's gonna be, that's gonna be a future uh, short at some point on the channel, so yeah. To get people who wanted to click. Oh yeah, definitely. Oh my god, that yes, deserves, that deserves it. <laughs> I just have like a fucking this. short from the podcast, <laughs> just like this picture of yeah. two girls kissing. Andy's just like, well, how, why, why did you do this? It's just like uh, the meme, the lols, the memes. I don't know. <laughs> Which is actually kind of funny because there was like this one picture, uh, where, uh. I, there was like one picture I wanted to make where uh, Andy ended up drawing Civil Wicked, but um, Civil Wicked was kind of like 
awkward about it like why on what compelled you to draw this and then Susie was just like oh it better be for the lols and she like raises her fist almost ready to punch her yeah <laughs> looking very serious she has like very that on her face going it, on yeah I love Susie <laughs> she's a she's great yeah it's you know we need to give her some love but again they need to give this game more love <laughs> <laughs> we're the only podcast who's doing this by the way that's the only episode that loves this game because apparently i don't know like the the developers wanted to say it but i don't know if galactic does i again it's so weird how it just decided to die. it's all it all it's all because of 2011 in a way it, partially it's that but it's also i think 2020 like I hate to say it, but you know how every game tends to say, like, you know, they, they always look at, like, oh, this is the worst year, right? But most people don't realize yeah. is that usually the thing that happened before that worst year is technically the worst one, because that ended up preceding everything else after that, right? right. So, partially, in my opinion because of how this game operated 2020, despite it being one of the best years out there, I think was also the worst as far as financially goes because of how much it, uh, you know, they put into and not got back out of, like, I would say Halloween would be the most realistically made the money out of. And everything else was probably just, you know, because of almost the guy put a lot of stuff in the updates and it's just like, it's gotta pay, you know what I mean? So, Right. I'm sure they were in a hard place or like shit. So I don't know, man. It it sucks that we're at this position, but I guess my only hope is that they're working on actually updating the game so that way they can go, all right, updates moving forward would be very easy for us. All we have to do is make content and just put it in the game and be done. That's all we need to do. Saves us time and resources by just working on it now. That's my hope of what's going on, but who knows? But yeah, I think partially the reason why it also had such a long dead period for 2021 is probably because of the fact that we had... What was it? It's because the Scholastic and Sony were arguing who had the rights to the license and all that. Because I think right. originally they were like, oh, Sony has the rights to it, but then Scholastic is here doing other shit behind their back. So it's like, well, what the fuck? So I'm sure that they took a long time trying to figure it. So everything that was working on the project had basically been on hold until at the end of the year. They're like, finally, they figured out, all right, fine, Sony, you can have the rights to it. And we just own like we we own the rights, to the books and everything. But as far as licensing stuff goes, you deal with it. So, I think that's partially a reason why, but who knows? We don't work at the company, so we have we can only be guesstimating at this point. Educated guesses by information we've heard or we've seen from other people, right? So that's our, uh, I think, opinions on that matter as far as the whole game stuff is concerned. But, yeah, I mean, I don't know, like... I'm just hoping they do end up making this game a lot better as far as content stuff goes. It sounds like they have, like, I'm very curious to see how this next update turns out because he was hyping this up. He was like, oh, we're making two parts. So it's like, ooh. Right, but you never know what, what it could be, right? So, right. You, you know, the guy's hyping it up, so it better it better be worth the acceptation. What I will say is that despite the fact that we had such a dead period, ever since this game launched back in, well, ignoring 2017 because that was when the, it went into beta, but it officially launched in 2018. But ever since 2018, we have never not had a Halloween update. They always had a Halloween update. So worst case scenario, Halloween is the update we will talk about this update hopefully that won't be the case hopefully it'll be for september but who knows right 
But yeah, um, anything else you want to discuss or talk about when it comes to that type of stuff? Or uh, no, I got nothing. They're pretty much done now. We don't want to do anything else. Yeah, I got nothing. Sorry. All right, sorry, folks. We're all dead inside. But hey, it's not a long episode. I mean, it's under two hours. So yay! That's apology for the three hours we left last time. We hopefully next I mean, episode will be a lot we'll more go longer. Will hopefully be a lot more lively because it's going to be a the spooky month episode because we're filming that we're going to be filming this i think i want to say the 20th uh no the 21st of september i yeah i would say that 21st of september would be the best best bet and from there we will uh well either the 21st or yeah the 21st i i'm i'm, I'm debating on where <laughs> i'm debating on where i want to do it <laughs> the 21st it sounds like a good plan for that yeah, I'd say so. Okay, so 21st of September is going to be when we're filming for the Halloween episode, which will be premiering uh, in the middle of the Halloween month, which will be the 18th, I think. I don't know. I'm I'm looking at dates and debate. I'm, I'm predicting future stuff, but that might not happen. So we'll see what ends up happening, folks. But yeah, as, as in tradition, we always tend to end it on a clip. And this one's going to be very special because for the last updates, we've been, for the most part, doing different, uh, diff different clips from different shows and whatnot as memes and whatnot. But this time, we are actually going to do a meme by me. I'm going to be taking a clip from one of my previous Goosebumps Horror Town episodes as a clip for here as a sneak peek of what's to expect. So here it is. Oh, oh. This horrible tragedy can be prevented if and only if you surrender your money to me. And buy my jersey! Yeah, that was a classic. I the one thing I will say about that clip though is that I hate how that got copyrighted by Scholastic or either Scholastic or yeah, I think they own the rights to the show, but yeah, <laughs> they ended up copywriting it because it's like, ah, oh, you used the clip, sorry. But oh, wow, yeah. really? They did that? Yeah, I think so. But uh, I ended up keeping it because it was just the memes, right? But. <laughs> Again, Invader Zim again made its appearance once again, but yeah, I wonder if you know what it's gonna be. I will say this: it's not the pump, it's not Invader of the Pump, uh, the Jack O' Lanterns. We've already had that, right? So those those is not apparent again. But yeah, uh, anyways, that's I think that's it. So yeah, look forward to the next episode, which is gonna be the Halloween one, um, spooky month and all, which are gonna see my my take on Halloween. We already heard from vampires. Now it's my turn. So with that, hopefully you enjoy this episode. I have been Grim, and this has been my co-host, Vampire. Remember to eat your veggies, or they that's... just might eat you. And that's a wrap. See ya. The one thing I'll say, by the way, is that I just realized you you, you did the Choose Your Own Adventure book again. Why is that? What, what's with that? There's just so many possibilities with those things, you know? Yeah, but you keep doing because it, man. I know, I know. But uh, hopefully, yeah, yeah. hopefully, yeah, yeah. next yeah. time, it won't be such a thing. Okay, okay, whatever. Anyways, uh, oh, crap, we, we left this on. Uh, uh, but just bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh! Dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-